Hey, man, well, it's Jersey Sunday. Hey, man, and I guess you can tell I'm well out of my element. Somebody say amen, but hey, I bent and I broke and I did it. Somebody say amen. Glory to God. Give God another big hand praise. Amen, amen. All right, now, well, you can be seated. You can be seated, and we'll get ready to get going. Uh, one of the things, well, one of the things we want to get right into, we want to recognize in some things we had had, we had Jersey Sunday planned already before some things that happened last Sunday, amen, and, and because of them, I, I, don't want folk to rec I don't want folk to think we're doing things because of what happens in society. Uh, I think that was tragic. I think that is something that I think he touched people's lives like we didn't think because I think we opened up our heart to him. And because of that, we rooted, we, we, uh, we rooted for him. But one of the things I'm finding out is that a lot of people don't understand, you know, they're asking questions of why and what's going on. One of the things you have to recognize and understand this is that as long as we, as we live in the world, uh, one of the things that the Bible tells us that our lives is as vapor. So we're here today, and sometimes we're gone tomorrow. Somebody say amen to that. But one of the things that you and I have to recognize also is that we got to give our very best every day, every minute, every hour. If one thing that we didn't get if one thing that we got from him, it should have been love your family. Love them and don't allow the enemy to come in between. Uh, you know, I saw some stuff this week that I was like, man, I'm amazed at how people have allowed grudges to get in the way of their relationship with people. Somebody say amen to that. And so we thank God for uh, every one of you have a life to live, and I think you should live that. Somebody say amen. amen. All right, now, watch this. I want you to understand something, even though it's Jersey Sunday, uh, it's Jersey Sunday, uh, but one of the things I want you to recognize is that even though we have all jerseys and everything, there's a jersey that we all should always wear. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. And the jersey that we should also wear, always wear is the jersey of Jesus Christ. Why? His name on our back, that's the one that makes the difference. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. All right. Let's get right into the word of God. Amen. All right. How many of y'all thought y'all would never see this day? Come on, wave your hand. You knew you. Some of y'all said, I'll never see pastor. And <laughs> come on, be real. Some of y'all with you. Wave your hand and say, I ain't never thought I'd see something like this. Hey, let's not get, one of the things we got to, <laughs> uh, I'll see you next Sunday. <laughs> but one of the things I want you to realize um, that, and I'm going to read some stuff that I think is important. God sometimes thinks, uh, he looks at us different than we look at ourselves. Somebody say amen. And I think you and I as believers have to really get to the place of tearing down certain cows that we may have. And sometimes we have religious cows that we have, and we all have our certain ideas of certain things. But there comes a time that we have to ask ourselves, what is important to God? And once we get to that place, I think we can glorify him the way that he desires. Somebody say amen to that. All right, let's go to work because I got some scripture that I believe God wants you to receive today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We're thanking you, dear God, because we truly believe that it is you who worketh in us the will to do of your good pleasure. We're asking, Heavenly Father, that on this day that you will continually help us to help us and rem help us to remember who is number one in our lives. Help us to remember why we get up every morning. Help us to remember who you are in our lives so that we can live our life to give you glory, honor, and praise. Heavenly Father, we thank you, and we say amen and amen for the food we are about to receive in Jesus' name. 
we all say amen. Did you know that you could know someone but really not know the person? You can become an expert about a thing or about a place without really going to the place. One of the things I want to talk about this morning is really knowing more about God and knowing more of Him is the difference we're going to make between head knowledge and heart knowledge. Say that behind me today. Knowing more of God, knowing more of God. and knowing more, knowing more of Him knowing is the difference between head knowledge and heart knowledge. Amen. It's the difference between passion, truth, and it's going to be the difference between just knowing the truth. See, some folk just know an idea of truth, but I want to get you to a place where you are passionate about truth. Amen. John 5 and 44, the Amplified Version. I want to get into some, an area. We have been talking about the heart and the heart of the matter. And... Um, we, we've been talking about how important the heart is. One of the things we found out in Proverbs 4 and 20 was that God wants you and I to guard our heart. It is imperative that we all guard our heart. Somebody say amen to that. All right. Now, guarding our heart is Im imperative, but now today, now that we've learned how to guard our heart, now we want to get to a place where we are molding and allowing our heart to be shaped and mold in, molded into the image of God. Amen. Look what the Bible says, John 5 and 44. How is it possible for you to believe, now watch this, look at this. How is it possible for you to believe how you can learn to believe you, you who are content to seek and, re, and receive praise and honor and glory from one another and, you, and yet do not seek the praise and honor and glory which come from him who alone is God. Did you hear what that said? He just said something there. He's saying that, hey, look, you're looking for honor and you're looking for an attaboy from people who really, it doesn't matter. I, what about me? What is the glory that you're going to give to me? Look what the Bible says in Luke 16 and 14, please. Luke 16 and 14. Luke 16 and 14. Now the Pharisees who were co covetous and lovers of money heard all these things taken together and they began to sneer, sneer at and ridicule and scuff at him. Next verse, please. But he said to them, you are the ones who declare yourselves just and upright before men but God knows your heart, for what is exalted and highly thought of among men, look at this, is detestable and abhorrent and abomination in the sight of God. What he's saying is what you're accepting in the sight of men and what is acceptable to men may not be acceptable to me. Matter of fact, I may detest it, amen, and it may, and look, he said, and it may be an abomination in my sight. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Write this question down. Write this question down because I want you to get this. Today I want to ask you a question. Do you want more of God or do you want more from God? Do you want more of God or do you want more from God? It seems like the same question almost, but it's really different. Do you want more of God? Because wanting more of God is really different from wanting wanting things from God. Most people in church want things from God, but not really more of God. But you're not realizing that when you get more of God, you'll get more from God. Somebody say amen to that. All right. Write this down. Wanting more of God is, is, is allowing God or allowing Him to define and accomplish your goals. It's allowing God to define and accomplish your goals. Wanting more of God is desiring Him for what He is in Himself. If I'm gonna, if I want more of God, I want God to define my goals, my desires, 
if I want more of God, I want to desire what he is and not what I am. Somebody say amen to that. That's why I see when you put on the jersey, when you put on the shirt, you identify with the person. Somebody say amen. You either identify something with that person. That's why you wore it. Somebody say amen to that. See, when you put on Christ, it's the same thing. I'm identifying with Christ. I'm identifying with who he is. I'm identifying with what he believes. Somebody say amen to that. See, I have to recognize that. Why? Because, see, going forward, if I'm going to get like God, if I'm going to change my heart, if my heart's going to be like God, there are certain things I have to change to be like him. Somebody say amen to that. All right. Wanting more of God is partaking of the divine nature. The Bible tells us that in 2 Peter 1 and 4. Partaking of the divine nature. Wanting more of God, again, is exchanging my desires for his desires. I'm exchanging my desires for his desires. Psalms 37 and 4, one of my favorite scriptures, I believe I told you that years ago, one of the favorite scriptures is, God says this, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will, look at this, and he will give you the desires and secret partitions of your heart. Things you didn't even ask for, he's going to give you. Somebody say amen to that. All right. Things I didn't even ask for, God's going to give me. Things I didn't even desire, God's, God said, if I put my desires on his. See, a lot of times, if we're honest with ourselves, we don't get what we pray for because we're praying and asking amiss. Amen. We're asking for things that God said, now you're not ready or you don't need. Amen. Somebody say amen to that. All right. See, because if I'm not careful, see, God said that's the reason why a lot of times in prayer we miss the mark. We miss the mark because we miss the mark because what we're praying for. Amen. Sometimes we're praying to consume the thing in our own lust if we're not careful. Somebody say amen to that. One of the things, wanting more of him is focusing on what he is like. Wanting more of him is focusing on what he is like. One of the things that I've recognized in life, listen to this, that God really doesn't need your prayers. Somebody say amen to that. But yet God said that man should always pray and not faint. See, because prayer is not for God, prayer is for you to be close to God. Amen. 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 Now you, you, you see where we're going. So prayer is necessary for me so that I can grow closer to God. Somebody say amen to that. All right. The Bible talks about, in the book of Acts, the Bible tells us about a man. It, turn with me to Acts 13 and 22. Because we have been talking about the heart. We've been talking about how emotionally we can allow people into our heart. And that's what we did. That's why a lot of us, it's amazing, a lot of us that grew up, um, grew up watching Kobe over the years, it's amazing that when he passed away, some of us had heavy feelings. Somebody say amen. Nah, I'm not saying everybody, but I'm saying there was some of us who watched him all throughout, and, and, and we just had heavy feelings. You know, we, um, I called my brother, me and my brother, we've been uh, in this, in this uh, watched him ever since he was a teenager. And my brother even said the same thing. He said, you know what, man? He said, I didn't want to call you, amen. Isn't that crazy? He said, it just feels like a relative, amen. And it feels like that because we open up our heart. Amen. Amen. When you open up your heart, you're letting people in there that you didn't expect to be in there. And see, they became a part of you whether you wanted to believe that or not. Somebody say amen. That's why their victories were your victories. Amen. Somebody say amen. Did you understand? When they won, you won. You were like, yeah, you know, when somebody talked about him, you were standing up talking. Come on, am I the only one? Somebody say amen. Okay, you, amen. So this one, a uh, folk called me, a uh, folk called somebody, we were in a meeting, folk called and said, is pastor all right? Amen. 
and I, I'm going to be all right, glory to God, amen, because I understand that life continually goes on, you know, and we continually pray for those that are still here. Amen. Somebody say amen to that, all right. But I, I saw some things, I, I saw some things that people are evil. Left to themselves, they're still evil in the world that people just can't let it go. Amen. Somebody say amen to that. But one of the things I want you to recognize that is who you allow into your heart, you become one with or you become a part of. If you allow God into your heart, that thing becomes one. And see, and that's one thing that David did. And that's where we're going to go today. We're going to find out how do I become this person after God's, God's heart. If you're here today, if you're listening to me, I know every one of us want to be liked by God. Okay, okay, let me pause. How many of you, every, everybody in here want, wants to be liked? Am I right? Everybody, likes, everybody wants somebody to like them. Amen. Your peers, you want, when you show up, you want people to know your name. And you want people to like you. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, let's just be real. You want people to like you. If you're not careful, you'll want the wrong people to like you. Yeah. You'll want people to like you more than you want God to like you. Are you with me? And see, and so a lot of times, a lot of times when you put on something like this, a lot of times, sometimes you're putting it on because you want to be a part of a community. And you really want someone to like you. But see, when you put on Jesus Christ, he said everybody's not going to like you. Amen. Why? Because you put on the opposing team's jersey. Somebody say amen. I was watching another pastor the other day. He was talking about this. He said, man, I hate it. He said, I love Kobe, but I hated Kobe. He said, because Kobe would drop 40 or 50 on your team. Somebody say Amen. And then he'd pump his arm like this, and see, I'm home pumping mine with him. <laughs> and I'm hollering at him. I'm like, no, don't do that. And then I'm like, do that. But man, you know what? I, I, there's something that you didn't know about him, how much he did love his, his girls. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. And, and see, if there's something you should take away is the love that the man was showing towards his kid. Somebody said that he, they've never seen him. I think it was LeBron said he's never seen him so happy after he left the league. Because he was spending more time with his babies. Somebody say amen. And it seemed like the one that went with him was the one that was going to be him. <laughs> like him even more. Somebody say amen. Pray for that family. Amen. Pray, even if you didn't like him, pray for him. But what, what, what don't you like about people? Amen. I think we got to start examining our heart. Why we don't like somebody? And that I don't like you is a strong word. Right. I don't like you. I mean, I, there's people I didn't like. I didn't like Larry Bird when they were playing. And, you know, <laughs> I mean, I didn't like Larry Bird, man, at all, man. And. I grew, I got to a place where I said, man, you know, I like that Larry Bird, you know, and I couldn't stand that other boy, that Tom Brady, I couldn't stand for the longest time. Somebody said, every, every Super Bowl Sunday, it seemed like Tom was there, you know, and I, and I don't know about you, but I got taught of seeing Tom. And I said, man, will somebody take Tom out? Hey, man, Tom, Tom figured out a way to get them rings every time. Amen. Tom said he wanted six rings like Kobe wanted six. Amen. And I found out something about those two guys. That they had a work ethic that most people didn't have. And I respect, once I found out the ethic that Tom, now, now watch this. Once I found out the ethic that Tom had, I had to like Tom. Man, I started looking at Tom. Believe it or not, I know, I know it's it's sacrilege to 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 root for a Boston team, but I did root for Tom after a time. And when I seen Tom now, I root for Tom. I said, man, you go get him. You know why? Because I saw he was putting in work when others were going home and sleep. So how can I blame a man for putting in time? Come on now. Now I'm I'm taking you somewhere. How can I blame somebody else for putting in time? 
and, and they're good at what they do. It's the same with COVID. He put in the time. Why are you mad at him? Because you stayed home and played video games. Most of your kids think they're going to be good by playing video games, not knowing that the work ethic that this man put in. Somebody say amen. All right. Okay. All right. Amen. Now, they're not the only ones, but there's a whole bunch of them that put in time, that put in the work. Amen. Is God good? All right. Well, David was another one. This time we're going to go spiritual. David was a person that put in work with all his mistakes. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Come on, no, no, all his mistakes, David still put in time. And all his mistakes, David still, I got to show you this, David was called a person after God's heart with his mistakes. I don't know about you, but or bad decisions, I don't know about you, but man, he had some heavy ones. But yet God said, no, no, you, you got to, there's more to him than what you just saw. Somebody say amen to that. And today we want to dissect David, what David, what God saw in David, so maybe he can see that in you, so that you too can be a person after God's heart. Amen. I don't know about you, but if we had anybody we want to be like today, it's going to be like God. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. I want my heart. I want to have God's heart. Amen. You know when you got somebody's heart. Yep. Somebody say amen. They'll do things for you that nobody else will do. Yeah. Amen. amen. They'll, they'll cry. They'll root for you. Amen. When you have their heart, you got them. Somebody say amen. amen. Look what the Bible says. And when he had deposed him, he raised up David to be their king. Of him he bore witness and said, I found David, the son of Jesse, a man, look at this, this is what you got to get to, a man after my own heart. Wow, man, that's powerful. Who will do all my will and carry out my program fully. I got to go back <laughs> where he said, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. Every one of you today should be a person that is after the heart of God. Amen. Did you hear what I just said? Every one of you should be a person that is after the heart of God. You should have, uh, you know, uh, man, that's so good, God. That is so good. Somebody uh, gifted me with this. Over 18, I, I keep getting my year wrong, but I think it's about 18 years ago somebody gifted me with this. Because they knew, you know. And they put, and you know, I, I got to show you something. And I put it in my closet. I, I put it on once, and I said, oh man, I put it, oh man, Father, you are awesome. And, uh, and, 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 and I put it in there and just left it. You know, I just left it, just put it in there. You know, you, you've done things. People give you stuff and you put it away too. And, and I put it in there, just left it there. Didn't even pull it out of anything. Now watch you. And so after, then I pulled it out. Recently, I just pulled it out, right? And I said, oh my goodness, look at that. And I said, look what I had. And I said, I didn't know this was made before. <laughs> but this was made before there was white. Oh, okay, you don't understand. Just like what it was with God, with you, he already fitted you with something before you needed it. Did you catch what I was saying? And so, when I pulled it out, I didn't like the way it felt. I mean, now watch where I go somewhere. I didn't like the way it fit, it fit on me. All right. And so I went to my guy, and my guy said, oh, no. He said, and now I said, I want to show you something. He said, when do, you, when do you need that? And I said, I asked him, I said, hey, you got I got three questions. And I said, here's my three questions. And I said, one, oh, man, this is good stuff. I said, one, can you do it? You know, because I didn't like the way it fit. Amen. I want to show you what God is doing with your gear. 
And so I walked in, and then God, and he said, well, no, I do that. Man, that ain't no problem. I said, oh, great. And he, I said, he said, when you want this, tonight? I said, no, I want it tomorrow. He said, no, you want it tonight. All right, I'll have this for you tonight. What I'm saying to you is that God has already fitted you with what you're supposed to wear. You just need to go pick it up and put it on. Somebody say amen. amen. He blessed you years ago before the foundation of the earth. He made sure you had what you needed to live a successful life here today in this world. Somebody say amen. amen. But you got to put it on. Somebody say put it on. All right, now watch this. I got to identify two things this morning, and I'm not going to be long, I promise you. Uh, famous last words, right? All right, look what the Bible says. Again, I found David a son, a man after my own heart. The first thing that David, we're going to find out about David is this. David, write this down. David was a man who had absolute faith in God. He had absolute faith in God. David didn't have, <coughs> pardon me, David didn't have faith in his own ability. David had faith in God. Let's look at that. Turn with me to 1 Samuel 17. 1 Samuel 17. Man, I have never seen so mean people. I, whew, this, this week brought out meanness when that, we think somebody's getting more adoration than us. Well, we just bring it out, don't we? Somebody say amen. I'll say this again. I said it before. If you didn't see it with your little eyes and hear it with your, your little ears, don't say it with your big mouth. Somebody say amen. And David, isn't that good? And David said unto Saul, thy servant kept. Look at this. David had faith in God like we need to have faith. The first thing... If I'm going to have, watch this, listen to me real quickly. If I'm going to go after God's own heart, the first thing that I need to have is faith. I've got to believe in not my ability, but I've got to believe in God's ability. Why? Because I've got to start seeing myself the way that God sees me. Because what I see, I will give birth to. Did you hear what I just said? I've got to show you this. What I see, I give birth to. What I see, say that, what I see, what I, see I, give birth to. I give birth to. All right, I'm going to prove that to you today before you go. What you see, you'll give birth to. What you put your eyes on, what is the vision that God has placed inside of you? Are you seeing what God says you are? That's the reason why God tells you to meditate on his word both day and night. He wants you to see victory instead of defeat. And David said, okay, let me get, get done. And David said unto Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. All right? And I went. See, there's always going to be a thief in the, be in, the, in the midst. And I went out after him. Notice what he did. He said, I went out after him. I didn't let this go. And smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Man, that's powerful. Next verse, please. Thy servant slew both, look at this, thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and his and this uncircumcised Philistine. Now remember, when he's calling him uncircumcised, he's saying you don't have a covenant. Amen. And because you don't have a covenant with God, shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of God. Did y'all see that? Next verse, please. David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion. Look at this. David's giving credit to who did it. David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go, go, and the Lord be with me. We found out about Saul is that one thing we found about, there are going to be Saul's in our life. Somebody say amen. amen. All right, and there are going to be Saul's that are going to want us to kill things for them. But after we kill the thing for them, usually they're going to want to kill us. 
That's what Saul's do. Come on, somebody say amen. Look what he says in the 45th verse. Let's skip down to 45. Look what he says. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. He's not standing by himself. Somebody say amen. amen. This day will the Lord, here it is, watch this. Now, look, look what he's saying. Look what he's saying. Now, that's why I'm asking you, what are you saying? What are you seeing when it pertaineth to your life? What are you seeing? This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand. Look what he says. God's going to give you into my hand. Did y'all hear that? Yes. No, y'all didn't catch that. God, today God's going to give you, wait a minute. Is he prophesying or is he seeing something? You see what I mean? Why? See, because I'm seeing, look, look at what he's saying. I'm seeing that God's going to give you today in my hand. Every enemy that is coming up to you, you've got to be able to see that God's going to give you them into your hand. Look what he says. And take thee head, take thine he, head from thee. I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistine this day and unto the fowls of the air and unto the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God where? In Israel. Turn with me to Genesis. Genesis 30. Genesis 30. I want to show you something before we go. Genesis 30. How many of y'all remember the story of Jacob and, and Laban? The story of Jacob and Laban is as such as Jacob, you know, was serving Laban at the time, and then he had got to the place where he said, give me my stuff so I can just get on out of here. Amen. And one of the things that has happened here now is that he says, Laban said, okay, yeah, let's do this. Now watch this. But something happens. Something happens. Watch this. Turn with me to uh, 31. Oh, let's go to 30th verse. I want to show you something. For it was a little which thou hast before I came. This is Jacob talking. And he says, you had a little bit when I came, and it is now increasing to a multitude. And the Lord had blessed thee since my coming. And now when, when shall I provide for my own house also? Next verse. And he said, what shall I give thee? And Jacob said, thou shalt not give me anything. If thou wilt do this thing for me. I will again feed and keep thy flock. Look at this. I will pass through all the flocks to the day. Now, see, I want you to get to the place where you're seeing. Because what you see, you give birth to. All right. I will pass through all the flock today, removing from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle, and all the brown cattle among the sheep, and the spotted and the speckled among the goats, and of such shall be my, my, be my hire. Do you see this? So shall my righteousness answer for me in the time to come when it shall come for me, my hire before thy face, everyone that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and brown among the sheep that shall be counted stolen with me. So if they're brown, if they're a solid color, they're not going to be mine. But if they're speckled, they're mine. Right? Isn't that a good, that's a good deal. He, he said, this is going to be the deal. Let's do it this way. Amen. I, I truly believe God was leading him in doing this. All right. And Laban said, behold, I would. Now watch this, man. This is right out of uh, Channel 29 movie. And Laban said, behold, I would, I would, it might be according to thy word. Okay, I'm going to do exactly what you said. I said, I think that's a good thing. And he removed that day. Now watch this. He removed that day the goats that were ring, ring straight. You see what Laban just did? He's taking the goats that are already got spots and everything on them so that, that Jacob doesn't have any spots. He doesn't have anything to work with. That's cold. Yeah. Am I the only one? No. The enemy. La, la, la. And all the she goats that were speckled, he took all the she goats and speckled and spotted and everyone that had some white in it and all the brown among the sheep and gave them into the hands of his son. He said, yo, boys, take this, take this before he come back. 
Can you see him doing that? Take these before he come back. Cool, take him. See, because he said he knew Laban had already, I mean, Jacob had already said that. And he said, three days journey betwixt himself and Jacob. And Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flock. Now, J Jacob only had full color sheep and, and goats. He only had full color, right? Now, watch this. And Jacob took him rods of green poplar and of the hazel and the chestnut tree and, and peeled white stakes in them. Look, look, look at it. And, and made the white appear which was in the rods. Look at this. And he set the rods which he had peeled before the flocks in the gutters in the water trough where the flocks came to drink. So every time, come on, you got to see this. So every time they came to drink, they saw what they should be. See, they didn't see themselves. They saw what they should give birth to. Are you listening to me? That's why David had that confession of faith. He knew what God could do because that's the vision he had on the inside. What vision do you have? Watch this. And he set the rods which he had peeled before the flock in the gutters, in the water trough, when the flock came to drink, that they should conceive when they came to drink. Look, he said, every time you look at who you are, and I believe water gives you a reflection of an image. Somebody say Amen. But they were looking through that water and they saw something. They saw something. They said, man, this is the way it is. And watch what happens. And the flocks conceived before the rods and brought forth cattle. Yep. <coughs> but what color are they? Ring straight. Ring straight means it goes around like that. Speckled. Spotted. Now, remember the deal. Everything speckled, spotted, and ring straight is mine. So Laban took all of them so he couldn't, so they couldn't mate. See, because if you put two, uh, a female and a male that is speckled together, usually you're going to get speckled. Somebody say amen to that. All right. But now he's got another plan working. He's got a vision going on the inside of them. And Jacob did separate the lambs and set the faces of the flock toward the ring straight and all the brown in the flock of Laban. And he put his own flocks by themselves and put them not into Laban's cattle. Next verse. And it came to pass, whensoever the stronger cattle did conceive, that Jacob laid the rods before the eyes of the cattle in the gutters, that they might conceive among the rods. Man, he didn't change something again. He said, now I'm going to make you strong. But when the cattle were feeble, he put them not in so that the feebler were Laban's and the stronger Jacob's. Watch what, how this ends. And the man increased exceedingly and had much cattle and maid servants and men servants and camels and asses. Did y'all see that? So he increased greatly. Look at your neighbor and say, he increased, he increased greatly, greatly because of what he saw. Of what he saw. You got to be able to see what God sees. That's why David was able to stand on the battlefield and say what he said. Are you with me? Look at this. The second thing we see with David. So David had great faith. Look at your neighbor and say, David had faith because of the vision that he saw. And the vision that he saw is that God is great. God is awesome. Now understand this, that David didn't write all the Psalms, but he wrote a great majority of the Psalms. And because of it, we get to learn a lot about David from what he wrote. Somebody say amen to that. We understood that David, even when he got down, he got back up. Amen. Even when people talked about him, he got back up. Even when folk came and looked like, when it looked like it was his end, he got back up. Amen. That's what God is looking for. Will you stay down or will you get back up? Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. So the second thing that David does, and we'll end right here today, is he loved God and loved God's word. He loved God's word. Look at your neighbor and say, David, David. loved God's word. God's word. One of the things that you and I have to get to is at a place where we love what the word of God says to us. We got to love what God's word is and who he says it is. I got to get to the place where I'm just in love with that word. Somebody say amen to that. All right. Turn with me to 1 Samuel 30, please. <laughs> David needed direction. 
Look at your neighbor and say that God wants to give me direction. Everything that God wants me to do, he wants to be the leader of it. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. I said turn to Psalm, uh, 1 Samuel, but before we go to 1 Samuel, let's go to Psalms 119, please. Psalms 119. There's a bunch I want to show you. Psalms 119 and 11. The first thing that I want you to understand is that when David did fall, David understood that it was God. God, God came back to him. God sent him a man that told him, you know, you're off. And the very thing that David does now is get it right. Look at your neighbor and say, he gets it right. <laughs> and I will delight myself. Look at this. Uh, at Psalms 119.11 says, thy word have I. Everybody ready to read. Thy word. Come on. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I. All right. The problem with sin is, the, the thing is, here he's saying, if I put the word in my heart, then sin will not have an effect on me. Sin cannot live in me. Somebody say amen. I do not sin when I have his word hidden in my heart. Somebody say amen to that. Now let's go to Psalms 119 and 47 now, please. Psalms 119 and 47. I want to show you, you we got to get to the place where we love direction from God. we got to get to the place where I understand that my direction that I'm getting from God is going to come through his word. And I will delight myself and look at what he says. I, and I will, everybody say, I will, I will delight, myself delight myself in thy commandments, in thy commandments which, I love. which I love. Do you see what he's saying? He's saying, I love God so much I'm going to delight myself in him in his commandments, and I will delight myself in the commandments which I have loved. Next verse, please. My hands also will I lift up in unto thy commandments, which I have loved, and I will meditate in thy statutes. Do you see what he's saying? Go to Psalms 119, 148, please. Psalms 119, 148. One of the major things that get that will get us in trouble with God is when we become distracted with things that we shouldn't be distracted with. Somebody say amen. amen. Mine eyes prevent the night watches, look at this, that I might meditate in thy word. Did y'all see what he just said? One of the things that he said, I'm not going to let my eyes go to sleep. I'm not going to let my eyes close so that I can stay woke so that I can meditate on his word. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Turn with me to Psalms. I mean, Samuel, 1 Samuel 30 and 6. 1 Samuel 30 and 6. God's, God wants you and I to get to a place where we're recognizing that he is our source, that his word, we got to embrace his word like never before. We got to take his word, surround ourselves with it, and then run with it. Somebody say amen to that. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him. Look at this. I said six. Let's go to 30 and 1, please. 30 and 1. And it came to pass. Now watch this. I want to show you this. And when it came to pass, when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and, the, and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with what? Fire. Next verse. And it had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any. That they had taken who? The women captive that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. Somebody say amen. amen. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire. And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Man, say that's a bad thing. Next verse. Then David... And the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. Next verse, please. And David's two wives were taken captive. You know the girl's name. And you know it was Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. Amen? All right. <laughs> Look, some of y'all are like, what? Glory to God. <laughs> But look at this. This would upset anybody. But I want to show you something. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him. 
because the soul, man, I know what that feel like. Because the soul of all the people were grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David, look what, look what he does. He encouraged himself in who? The Lord his God. Y'all see that? Go to the eighth verse, please. Look where David goes to. He doesn't go to his cousin. He doesn't go to his friend. He goes to God. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? See, don't you find it funny that we make a lot of decisions in life without even asking God? Isn't that, hard? Isn't that crazy? We make a lot of decisions. God, I want to do this. I want to do this. And then we just go and do it, but we don't even ask God what we desire to do. See, that's what, if I want to, be, if I want to go after God's own heart, one of the things that I have to do is ask him. I want him to be a part of my life. And if I'm going to make God a part of my life, everybody stand up. If I'm going to make God a part, I'm almost done. Huh? It wasn't, look, you said it wasn't me. <laughs> glory to God. If I stand up, glory. Everybody good? Touch somebody on side of you. Glory to God. Touch somebody on side of you. Glory to God. Amen. All right. Give God a hand, praise. Amen. All right. All right. Go on, sit down. Go ahead, sit down. Go ahead, sit down. Now, now, this is what I want you to do. Now, I want you to look around like, was it you? <laughs> go ahead and ask somebody. Go ahead and look around there. Was it you? Which one was you? Amen. No, go ahead and ask. Find somebody and ask it. Say, was it you? No, no, no. Come on. Do y'all see? Ask. Who was it? Who was it? Did y'all figure out who it was? Who was it? It was Chris. Oh, look, they blamed it on Chris. <laughs> Chris said, wait a minute now, wait a minute now. I was in the story. I, 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 you know. See, I guess when I'm starting to read these stories, they're putting you, you like, man, this is a nice movie. I hope somebody get killed real fast. Cause I, <laughs> if they don't get killed real fast, I'm going, man. <laughs> Amen. Y'all got to get past them action movies. These are good dramas, amen? <laughs> I didn't know I'd be reading these stories. Y'all be like, this is putting me to sleep. Mm. This is like, mm, this is bedtime. <laughs> Glory to God. I wonder if Pastor can come over at night and read stories to us before we go to bed. That would be nice. Yeah. And then, Pastor, just lock up on your way out. Tiptoe, though. Read us stuff about God. Amen. <laughs> Turn on your own YouTube. I mean, your own uh, you version and push play and, and let it read to you. Somebody say amen. But when you come on Sunday, I ain't going to let you sleep. And I'm almost done. Y'all took up, took up two, three minutes of my time. Now I got to take that back. <laughs> nah, nah, I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it go. But look at this. Okay, look, I'm not going to read. I ain't read no more. Cause, okay, I am. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this truth? And he did ask the question. And God says, For, shall, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. One of the things I wanted you to see is that David asked of the Lord what he should do. And I think in everything that you do in life, ask God what you should do. What you should do, how I should do it. Let God lead God and direct you. There are some jobs you're on because you did it. Somebody say amen to that. Turn with me to Luke 10. Luke 10, 38, 38. See, a lot of times in life, if we're not careful, we become distracted by certain things. I want to show you that that's why I was just showing you today. I just briefly went in today on understanding two things about David. And, and then we'll get to the third thing. And there's so much about David that's awesome. But one of the things I, I, I want to give you this is this. Uh, give me the amplified on that, please. Uh, one of the things I want you to understand again about David is that David loved God's word. So when you walk out today, you got to understand, if I want to be after God's heart, there are a few things I need to do. One, I got to have faith in God, not my ability. My ability don't do anything. Amen. Not my ability, God's ability. God uses me. He works through me. He operates through me. And that's what I need to understand that, you know, don't take credit for yourself. Amen. 
You see, when you give glory to God, man, that's giving honor and praise to him. You know, never ever think you can stand up and say, you know, I'm, I did all this myself. You didn't do all this yourself. You didn't do nothing yourself. God was behind everything you did. Make sure you always give him the glory. Amen. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Does that make sense? Yes. You know, when you step out, make sure you give God the glory. Amen. amen. You score a touchdown, give God the glory. Amen. I know I did it, but it was, I knew I couldn't have done it without the power of God on the inside of me. Amen. Somebody say amen. When you, when you teach your kids that, so the first thing's out of his mouth, I just want to give honor to God and thank him for, my, for giving me the ability and the power to do what I did. Amen. When, it, when you get a home, why don't you thank God for it? Yes. Amen. Amen. That's the first step, thanking God. Father, I thank you. You blessed us with a place to lay our head. You get a, I don't care how simple your car is. Father, I thank you that I have a car. Everybody doesn't have a car. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. See, when you after God's own heart, that's what God is looking for. Are you thankful? And that's a part we didn't get to yet. But are you even thankful for the little things that he does? Amen. I mean, you woke up this morning. Father, I thank you. Glory to God. Somebody say amen. I just told Teresa this. I said, man, it's Sunday all over again. You see what I mean? For some people, they didn't make it to this Sunday but yet we're still here see because we're still here and we can still give glory to God somebody say amen to that glory to God no matter what's going on in life you just got to be thankful to God you know what God showed me today, this week it was he said there is nothing that does not because people are questioning everything he said there ain't nothing that happens that I don't know about he said, I know about everything. Yes. And he said, even the bad things, I know about them. Yes. And he said, but I'm going to tell you, I will use everything. For those who love me, I will use it to work for my good. Yes. He said, and I said, wow, that's awesome. He said, no matter what happens, if you understand this, everything will work for your good, regardless yes. if you love me. Yes. This is what he said, if you love me, I don't care what comes your way, it will work for your good. Even those bad decisions you made, he said, I'm going to turn it and make it for your good. No, 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 I'm telling you the scripture because he says all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord. Somebody say amen. Look at this. I want to tell you, we got to get to the place where we're spending time with God and not spending time doing things because doing things will get us distracted. Look what the Bible says, and then we'll do, and I got two minutes. All right. Now, while they were on their way, it occurred that Jesus entered a certain village, and a woman named Martha received and welcomed him into her house. Who, who welcomed him into the house? Martha. So Martha said, come on in. All right, whose house was it? No, y'all ain't seeing it. Whose house was it? Okay. Okay, let's get back there there. Y'all act like y'all ain't even read the scripture. <laughs> let's read. Now, it occurred... Okay, there it is. A woman named who? Martha. Who is it? Martha. Okay, what she do? Where she well, she received him and welcomed him where? Into her house. What was her name? Martha. All right, all right, we're good. Who was it? Martha. Whose house was it? Martha. Some of y'all said that like y'all was African-American. I'm sorry. <laughs> Martha. <laughs> that was sweet. Amen. Next verse. Next verse. And she, she had a... Sister and Mary. What was the sister's name? Mary. What was the sister's name? Mary. Wh whose house she living in? Martha. Or whose house is it? Martha's. All right. Who seated herself. Look at Mary. 
Somebody say, look at Mary. No, look at Mary. No, I'm, all right. <laughs> I'm messing with y'all. All right. <laughs> look, y'all like, oh, that's funny. All right. And, he, and she said she had a sister named Mary who seated herself. Look at this. I love that. Don't y'all love that? Mary just said, plop. Look, look. And who seated herself at the Lord's feet and was li listening to his teaching. Man, that's awesome. I wonder how many of us could do that. All right, watch this. Next verse quickly. But Martha overly occupied and too busy was distracted with much serving. And she came up to him and said, Lord, it is nothing that you, nothing to you that my sister has left me to serve alone. Tell her. That sounds like some of y'all. Lord, tell her. Tell that man how he's supposed to be treating me. All right. Oh, I went way off. Amen. I'll come back. I see y'all went. No, don't do that. Was distracted with much serve. You that my sister has left to serve me alone. Tell her then to help me to lend a hand and do her part along with me. You see what he said? We'll see, what she, see what she said? But the Lord replied to her. Now, now, let's go back. Let's go back. But Martha, overly occupied and too busy, was distracted. Underline that in your Bible was distracted. One of the things that gets us off of being at the feet of Jesus is being distracted. Amen. When certain things go on in life, don't get distracted. Stay focused on what God had. Does that make sense? Just because certain things go down in life, that doesn't make, sh make, it, make it where everything stops. You have to understand that God is still on the throne and God is still being who he says he is. You that my sister was left to me to serve alone, tell her and help her to lend me hand. Look what Jesus said, 41. But the Lord replied to her by saying, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. Next verse. There is a need of only one or but a few things. Mary has chosen the good portion, that which is to her advantage, which shall not be taken away from her. What is he saying to you? He's telling you the very same thing. He's saying, sit at my feet because that's the most important part. Don't become distracted in much serving and doing other things because you can get off on doing that. Focus on what I'm saying. Somebody say amen. amen. Last thing I want to give you, and then we'll walk right out the door. Last thing I want to give you is this. When it comes to Satan, I mean Satan, when it comes to David, one of the things that he did, because I know it's on your mind, and I want to put it there before you go home, is this, he repented. Repentance is key to God. Repentance is key to God. And we'll dive back into that, but repentance is key to God. I heard another man of God said this, and, uh, and, but I truly agree with him. And it's amazing, I, was, I heard that this week. And he said, anyone who brings up your past is really of the devil. You didn't know that, did you? Anybody that brings up, he, he, he called that thing right. If I say his name, every, every one of you know. And I said, and you know what God did to me? This is what God did to me. Uh, this is funny. I thought, you know, God has a sense of humor. You know, never tell him what you ain't going to do. Right. <laughs> Amen, I'm not the only one before I leave out of here. Amen. Amen. Never tell God what you're not going to do. And, you know, so I said this, and see, some of you saying, well, I said this about this one preacher. And I said, I said, oh, I can't listen to him. I said, ah, I can't listen to that fellow. I said, and then I joked about it. I joked about it. And I said, I said, because he do this. And I said, I said, I said, I can't listen to him. I said, next thing I know, I jump in the car. A day later, I jump in the car. And I said, See their name come up, you know, satellite radio. And I said, ah, whatever. And I touched it. And behold, I couldn't move. And, I, and God said, ain't it funny, the one you couldn't listen to, the one I will speak through to get to you. And I was like, oh, 
and my wife was sitting there and we were both like and she was like good ain't it yeah I was like yeah I was like <laughs> then, it, then you give them credit see because a lot of times you're cutting off the very person that God's going to use to speak to you about your circumstance or your situation stop you're hurting yourself amen. somebody say amen to that all right back to repent I just thought that was hilarious uh, ever since then, every time I turn him on, it seemed like he's speaking. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Want me to tell you who it was? Okay, whatever. Now, I, I, you glory to, I tell you all mine. But no, I mean, it's just, it's just been a blessing. All right. So one of the things that I found out, though, is that people are quick to bring up, and I saw that with this. When you repent, and I saw that with this guy, and I saw that once he... My thing is this, and then my wife said, my wife told me this morning, they said they done brought Dr. King into it too now. I was like, what? You know, what did he have to do with this? Uh, Dr. King, I believe, died in 68. And I, what did he have to do with this? But people are so mean and crazy that they don't understand that God forgave you too. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. But one of the things, when you repent, one of the things that David did, see, a lot of people talk about David, and I'm just like David. Well, you're not just like David if you don't repent like David. Somebody say amen. David said something. Can I show you something before we leave? Yes. Psalms 51. Can I just read that? Yes. Psalms 51. But I want you to get to a place when you have repented, my wife has a thing. There is no one on the earth that has a right to go back into your past. Matter of fact, you ain't got a right. You keep going back into your past. See, you know what I found out about people? You don't know what they're, what they're doing with the Lord when you ain't around. So I've learned to shut up. Come on now. Oh, oh, only a few of us, only a few clap or one clap. I've learned that you need to shut up you, because I don't know if she's going to go get it right. And if she, while she's away from me, she's getting it right, now I'm the fool because I'm talking about her who got it right. And God's like, and God is saying, who are you talking about again? And who? Oh, I know who you are. You're the accuser of the brethren. See, be careful you don't become the accuser of the brethren because those people can get it right. And then you, I mean, I, I had to tell, we were talking to somebody the other day and I told somebody like that, it is your responsibility to keep your heart right. Somebody say amen. Your responsibility. Don't let, if David could repent, you know, what if David lived now? You wouldn't let him up. God gave you grace. Oh, can I get a witness on that? Amen. God gave you grace. I don't know about you. His mercies are new every day to you. And come on, somebody. And because of your grace, see, when you're after God's own heart, you recognize God gave you grace. Now it's easy when somebody roll up on you to give them grace. Because that's what uh, Colossians 3 told us, that we got to make room, we got to have space, we got to make space for folk to mess up. Not saying we want them to mess up, but we got to make space so if they do offend us, we're not offended. Man, that's good. I don't get offended. If, if, if that's what they did, that's what they did. Can, how long are we going to go back and get bring up what happened in the past? Me too. Not when you're walking in forgiveness. Why not when you're walking in grace? Because he did so much for you. Somebody say amen. amen. I don't know about you, but that's making my life much easier. You know, it's hard to talk about folk now because you don't know, you, because God tells you, watch yourself. Because uh, uh, me and my wife conversate about this subject and we said, you got to watch yourself because you don't know if folk is home doing this. Father, uh, forgive me. 
and you up there running your mouth on somebody who is a child of the king. And see, what happens is, oh, watch this, come on, man. What happens is, what happens is, he gets himself right. And then God said, I got you. Amen. Now, who you talking about? Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. So you got to be careful what's going on because, see, now he's standing here. And God, God said, I got this. You're in my shadow. You got, I got this. Amen. You're safe with me. Somebody say amen. But who is they talking about? Because the person that they're talking about is a new creation. Somebody say amen to that. Is God good? So you and I got to get to that place. David, when he repented, he repented. No, he was serious with God. Amen. Just like, just like he had the man of God come to him, you have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit comes to you and tells you when you off too. Because sometimes you blind to the fact, but you need to hear that voice tell you, you know you off. You know you wrong. Pride will stop you from saying you're wrong. Look what he said to the chief musician of Psalm of David. When Nathan the prophet came to him after he had sinned with Bathsheba, have mercy upon me, O God, according to your steadfast love, According to the, the, you see what happens? Nathan comes to him. I'm done. Nathan comes to him and tells him, first he gives him a story. Remember the story he gave him? He said, man, you, man, this guy took this, man, he took the little baby, man, that ain't right. And David said, who is that man? Yeah, yeah. Kill him, man. Do on that. He said, you man. Yeah. He's like, man, could you imagine being in that room when David went, ah, I'm the man. What do you mean? What do you mean? But the first thing he did, but now watch this. When he recognized his, he's wrong, when you recognize you're wrong, the first place back is to Christ. Yes. You run to the blood. Yes. Somebody say, when I, rec when, when, I've been, when I know I'm wrong, yes. I run back, I run back. To, the to the blood. The Bible says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and he is just to forgive us of our sin. Run home. Somebody say amen. amen. If you feel like you're the prodigal, run home. Amen. Don't walk, run. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. God's mercy is great for everyone. It doesn't matter what you have done. I got to say that God will come in and clean you up. Amen. Somebody say, are y'all receiving that? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Don't stay in it. Look what he said. When, when Nathan the prophet came to him, we're done. After he had sinned with Bathsheba, have mercy upon me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to the multitude of your tender mercy and loving kindness, blot out my transgression. Y'all see what he said? Amen. Have you ever said that to God? I mean, you just got before him and said, Father, just blot this out. Forgive me, God. I've went against your world, your will and your way. Wash me thoroughly and repeatedly from my iniquity and guilt and cleanse me. Oh, man, there it is again, from my iniquity and guilt. When you sin, guilt automatically comes with it. Guilt and shame. Remember those bags. We're out of time, but remember them bags. Those bags are the best illustration that we could ever give. Those bags are heavy bags. If you have never been here, uh, where's my guy? There he is. Lord, go. go ahead and get one of them bags before we leave because some folk have never been here. Amen. Go ahead and get that bag. You know why? Whoa, stop. You know why we asked him to get the bag? Because yeah. he's big swole. <laughs> you see, that's big swole right there. Glory to God. Amen. You can't tell, but he's swole. No, oh, glory to God. Before they leave, get the other bag. He didn't want it. Look, look, he's all fun. You see him? Look at that. You got to take these bags off the cross. See, because the rightful place for these to be is on the cross. You better tell it, girl. That's the rightful place. <laughs> oh, you big swole. Stop playing like you ain't big swole. I love this every time we do it. <laughs> 
Now, whoever, now, who was never here when we did this? Because I'm out of time. Hey, Doc, come up for a minute. Come on, Clover. Yeah, yeah, come on. Clover, Doug, God. He's like, I wasn't here. Hey, any other, female, any female wasn't here? Look, I did. <laughs> You're so sweet. you like, I don't want no parts of this. No. Uh, who, uh, one female. Give me a female. Oh, no. McDaniel, you wasn't here? You was up top? She was working. Well, we'll get, well, that's all right. We'll let you slide. Look, baby girl said, that's all right. All right. This is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. So because, go ahead. Give it to him. You would never hear it. Take shame with you. All right. And which one is this? Guilt? Yeah. Baby girl, here you go. Okay. Just for you. This your first time being with us? Yes. Oh, congratulations. Oh, okay. We're going to give you guilt for a gift. All right. All right. All right. All right. As a parting gift, there are some churches you go to, that's all you get is guilt. Somebody say amen. You come into some churches, they're going to give you shame, they're going to give you guilt. We're going to give you, I like this. You know who said this? Man, he said it good, man. I got to tell you, that boy, I got to tell you. It, you know, that Joel said something the other day. <laughs> and that Joel said this. He said, you ever notice this? You know, I, <laughs> that Joel. He said, that, and I said, yeah, Father, that Joel. And he said, yep, that Joel. And he said, this is what Joel said. And I said, Father, that is good. And he said, you ever know you go to the airport? <laughs> And you, you only allow two baggages. And you got to pay for more. He said, so you got a two package limit. He said, here at church, we have a no package limit. No, no baggage. Okay. <laughs> well, just hang in there. Okay. All right. Just hang in there. <laughs> but, but you know what? You, you strong. <laughs> Look, she keeps shifting it. In that, see what we do in life? We always use this illustration, this show, that when, if you don't repent, all you do is keep reshifting guilt. All you do, you, you try to hold on to it, but you just keep shifting. Now, Doc is just holding it. See, because right now, you know, he was built a little bit to handle it. You know. You shake it. Glory to God. Man, hey, look, he said, he said, I am shaking. Isn't that what shame does to you? Shame will have you always shaking. You know, who will next find out my darkest sin? Because that's what shame does. You see what I mean? And so, and baby girl said, mm hmm, when you gonna take this? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, you wanted to be a part of the abundant life on the day. Yeah. She like, and so you, if, if we do this right, she'll stay forever. But if, if not, she's like, I ain't coming back. Here. They give you a baggage over there. Glory to God. Somebody say, hey, man. But no, look, so she's holding on. You still shaking down? A little bit. You good? Oh, just a little bit. You doing better. Yeah, I had to shift. Oh, he had to. Oh. Yeah. Just see, a little bit. see. Come back. Who mm. <laughs> <Well>, you preaching? <laughs> Did you hear what he said? Oh, no. Man, he said, man, I had to shift it. He said, it felt good for a little bit. You know, because I shifted it. You know, I, I, I hit something to cloak it. I stuck, you know what I mean? That's what we do in life when we are walking with shame and guilt. We, we just do stuff to hide it. You know, so we'll work all day. So I don't think about the shame. I hide myself. Somebody once told me, they said, Pastor, I just go in the house and close my curtains and blinds and everything and just sit there. And I said, oh, my God. No, baby, we can be free. No, shame and guilt come from not repenting. Once you repent, you need to let it go. The greatest thing you are going to have to do, usually it's not forgiving others, it's forgiving you. Amen. You got to forgive you. I'm going to teach that coming up. You've got to forgive you. And you'll hold yourself in guilt and condemnation and judgment. And you try to punish yourself because of what you didn't do right with God. And so you hold on to it. Boy, it's working you, ain't it? Between the word and this, yeah. I'm, yeah I'm that word be good, but you be like, man, the word good. See, he's trying to listen, but that shame... 
You see what I mean? She's trying to smile, but it's taking a toll on her. Is it you, you done? You oh, she did it. She said she's fine, but I offered to take it. Oh. Even after I offered to take it, she shouted and she got it, but she still kept it. No, you can have it. Oh! Come on. <laughs> look at her. You better go in. Oh, look, 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 look. She dropped that. Doc said, well, I ain't got a whole mine either. I'll put mine there, too. Glory to God. It's one heck of a first time. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? See, all we need is a little excitement. All we need to do is somebody else do it. And look, Doc said, whoa, whoa, this is powerful. Man, that's powerful right there. Glory to God. Man. Woo! <laughs> Man, is that powerful? He said, man, I'm done. I ain't out of here. Yeah. He was like, you see that? He said, I ain't got no more time for that. You know what I mean? And then he went back and took his seat. You see what I mean? Where he is seated with Christ. Somebody say amen to that. He said, I ain't going to let that hold me. That ain't mine. See, you're still, if you're not careful, you'll walk past it. And you'll take it. And then, if you're not careful, I have, we got to go, man, this is always the best illustration. If you're not careful, you be like, girl, take this. No, girl, take this. No, girl, take this. No, come on, please, take it. Stop playing, stop playing. Take it. Come on, take that thing. <laughs> Oh, you pretty enough. <laughs> She's like, no. Amen. Amen. Anybody want it? All right. Stop it. No, no, you don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, look. His mother said, put your hand down. <laughs> I love it. Did you see it? She's like, put your hand down. You don't want no shame. Glory to God, God. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Amen. All right. Give her a great big hand. Amen. But, hey, in life, we keep picking this up. And when we don't forgive ourselves, we keep picking this up. And there are going to be people, listen, and I saw it this week, and it hurt my heart that people are that ignorant, but they want to put shame on somebody else. And if you're not careful, and we got one of our friends, one of our daughters that don't mess with her on the internet. She is a queen at fighting you back. <laughs> and she, she will go point by point to bust you down. Amen. And she's been, she been fighting a war. And I was like, girl, praise the Lord. But don't let people, oh, I had to lean forward and almost tipped over. <laughs> you see, I had to rebalance. And then look, all you had to say was, let it go. <laughs> you won't tip. Amen. Does that make sense? Be careful. We keep these in here on purpose so that we can always be reminded not to pick this up ever again. If you've ever missed God, shame is going to come. Guilt is going to come. But he said, I took those and put them on the cross for you. I want you to release that again today. Somebody say amen. amen. Here's the bad eyes are closed. Wait a minute. Let's, let's. Go on. <laughs> See, it doesn't matter how strong you are. You, can't, you ain't strong enough to hold guilt and shame. You might be able to hold it for a tiny bit, but it's going to come back and get you. Look, he quick to put it on the cross, too, ain't he? <laughs> Look at it. Look at it. Amen. Look at it. Go ahead, man. Put it on the cross. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. amen. He's going to put it right there. Glory to God. Amen. amen. Once again, 
it's time for you to put yours there. If we would look back in your life, we would find out that a lot of you are fighting things that if you want to be after God's own heart, you've got to release the sin that you were in. Somebody say, and stop letting people take you backwards. Look at your neighbor and say, I know that's right. Because all they're trying to put on you is shame and guilt. You ever notice you become paralyzed by your past? You got to let it go. Somebody say amen. amen. My wife asked me this morning, she said, when does the past really become the past? Because I said, I need to ask this question. And she said, well, when does it become the past? And when did it come right for you to dig into someone else's past? Somebody say amen. amen. We got to be careful. Amen. amen. Heads about eyes are closed. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for the word. We thank you, Heavenly Father, because I believe through David you're teaching us how to live a successful life, how to go after you, how to come after your heart. We believe it is the will of God for us to be able to get to a place where we walk by faith and not by sight, trusting in you and you only. You told us to do that in Proverbs. You told us that <clears throat> we should trust in you with all of our heart. Heavenly Father, you also told us <clears throat> tonight that your word is supreme and your word is number one. David loved your commandments. He loved your word. Even when he was found to be wrong, he loved your word. And Father, we thank you for teaching us today that we too have to love, love your word. We too have to become one with the word. Father, we thank you. We thank you, dear God, because we know once we really love you. Repentance is a part of that. Repentance is a part of that because of the grace and the mercy that you have shown to us. Because of it, we thank you, God. We thank you because of grace and mercy. Help us to continually identify when things are being said and done that there are things to release and let go and not to let anyone or anything disturb our peace. Father, we thank you. We give you glory, honor, and praise because you are God and God alone. On this day, all we desire is more of you, more of you, not more from you, more of you. We believe the from you will come when we get the more of you. Help us to continually strive forward to get more of you. When we're off and when we make the mistakes, Heavenly Father, thank you for never, ever leaving us alone. Thank you for giving us the Spirit of God to speak to us and to minister to us that we may be able to get ourselves to the position you desire. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for what you have done for so many in the body of Christ and even what you have done for, for us who have ever, ever gotten off the plane or gotten off the way that you have desired. Father, we give you praise, glory, and honor. We thank you for Jonah who refused to do what you had told him to do, but once he was vomited back out of the great fish, we find that you put him right back in line. God, there are those of us who are here today that need to get right back in line. If that is you, heads are bowed, eyes are closed and you need to get right back in line, I want you to stand up right where you are. God wants to meet you at the altar of your heart, at the altar of your heart. He wants you to get it right back in line so that you can do the things that would give him glory, honor, and praise. Glory to God. Father, we thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for each and every one that is standing today. We thank you, dear God, because we truly believe that restoration in heart comes from you. We truly believe that we may come in one way, but we don't have to stay that way. Today we release shame. Today we release guilt. Today we come to you asking for forgiveness, asking that the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses and washes us from all iniquity and all sin will do just that today so that we can live a life of abundance in you so that we can live a life that will give you glory, honor, and praise. Heavenly Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. 
Say that today, Father. I release, Father, I release anything, anything that I've said, that said or, done. or done. I ask, I ask that, you forgive me, Father, that you forgive me, Father, if I've gotten out of your will, out of your will in, any in any way. May the blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus cleanse, cleanse and wash me. Amen. The Bible says this, and you need to do this personally with him. He says, if you confess your sin, he is faithful and he is just to forgive you. Stop living a groundhog, groundhog type of day. Get free and live free forever and ever. Freedom was bought for you on Calvary's cross. Live that way every day. All I want you to do now is just thank God for the grace of God. Just thank him for the grace of God. Father, I thank you for your grace, your mercy, your everlasting kindness. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. God is an awesome God. Somebody say amen to that. Did y'all get blessed? <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Well, I'm out of time. I thank you for yours. Thank you for coming today. I thank you for coming out. It's a great day. Amen. It's not a great day because it's Super Bowl Sunday. It's a great day because it's always God's Sunday. Remember to put on his jersey every week, every day.